Hey everyone, in this episode of HubFuel, we're going to be talking about analytics. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the HubSpot and Salesforce integrations analytics. Now, if you've connected the two CRMs in the past and not looked at customizing your source mappings, you may be familiar with seeing something that looks like this. Now, what that essentially means is whilst that's great in terms of your original source being offline and then your original source data one being down to Salesforce, that's all well and good. Being able to quickly understand how many contacts came from Salesforce that generated X amount in revenue. But in this day and age, having the granularity that corresponds to the actual source may actually find that you're not properly allocating your revenue based on the most accurate source, whether that may be a social channel or paid because it's all getting grouped under offline. And if that's a pain point of yourselves, carry on watching this Hub Fuel episode. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head over to your integration screen. Now, if you've already, we're going to assume by this point in the video that you've already connected your Salesforce instance and you've otherwise started mapping some of the actual contact fields. If that's the case, carry on watching. What you're going to want to do is firstly head over to your Salesforce instance. Once you're in Salesforce, head to the top right and select setup and then set up once more. What you then want to do is down the left hand sidebar, scroll on down to objects and fields where it says object manager, select that. And then what you want to do is scroll down to where it says lead. Once you've opened the lead screen, select fields and relationships, which should bring up all your properties or fields that sit within the lead object in Salesforce. Now, we're going to need to create a custom property that uses the same values that HubSpot does. So what we're going to want to do is head to new. Then what we want to do is select pick list from here. If you select next, you'll then need to name the actual field, which if you just name this HubSpot original source you can then actually enter values separated by a new line. What we want to do is then head over to this resource, which is around creating the content analytics in Salesforce and simply start copying and pasting the new values, which each line being a new value. And keep on doing this until essentially you have fully mapped this out into the pick list. The reason that we're doing this is to ensure that both the values correspond across the two different CRMs. What we typically find is by not mapping this, the two CRMs differ in terms of how they attribute source data, which can cause discrepancies in your reports and your overall attribution modeling within HubSpot. Once you paste that, you do have the option to display them alphabetically if you're so inclined or actually use it as a default value. You can add in a description or help text if needed, but as this is a system field, you won't necessarily need to worry too much about that. Once that's all properly defined, all you want to do is then press next, which will allow you to establish any field level security, which isn't needed at this point. Press next. And then what you want to press is save. Now, if you search for a HubSpot, in your actual lead object, you have now created a new field. What we're going to need to do is repeat the process, but we need to do this for contacts. So if we once again, go back to our object manager and find the contact object, head to fields and relationships and select our new field in here. Again, once again, it's going to be a pick list, press next. And then what we need to do is name it the exact same value that we called the first um, field, which is HubSpot original source. Again, what we want to do is enter the values separated by a new line, and we just want to repeat the process once more. Once that's done, you can add a description if you need to, but you can just check all the field values which correspond here. And then once you're happy, press next. Once again, you can select any field level security, which isn't needed at this point. So we can press next. And all we just need to do is select where it is going to be going on the page layouts and press save. Once that's done, we've now successfully created our fields in the actual different objects, both for the contact and the lead object. So what that now means is we need to head back over to HubSpot. In order to do this, once you head into HubSpot, you then want to navigate to the contacts object, because what we want to do when we're in here is start to create a new field mapping. So what we're essentially going to do is wait for this to load and select the property that we're going to be mapping. So we're going to map the original source and we're going to map the original source once again. Press next. And for the sync rule, you just want to select two way. The reason that we say this is because if the original source is changes in Salesforce, you want to sync that back to HubSpot. If it changes in HubSpot, you want to sync that back to Salesforce. 
In short, we want to always use the most recent value. What this allows us to do is ensure that both the actual properties mirror across the two different systems. Once you're happy with that, press save, which should create the actual field mapping, allowing you to quickly search by the property. And you can see here that we have successfully mapped the actual property as so. Now at this point, you're probably asking, that's great, but what about the original source drill down one that HubSpot collects, which is additional information on the source? And I'm glad you're asked. So, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to repeat the process. So here we've created the actual values for the original source, but now we want to actually do the original source drill down one. So what we're going to want to do is head back over to our Salesforce and head to our object manager. And we're just going to repeat the process we went through initially. So we're going to head to lead where it says fields and relationships, select new. It's going to be a pick list. Apologies, we're going to actually select text. So if we scroll down and select text, as this value can be unique and there is no preset values that it can be set to. Once you've selected text, press next. And then what we're going to want to do is head back over to our HubSpot resource. And we're going to name it HubSpot Original Source Drill Down 1, like so. And once you're happy, press next. If error throws up based on the length, just simply input that as 255, which is the maximum length we can have as a text field in Salesforce. And press next, which should allow you to create the property like so. We're then going to press next once more. And then we're going to press save, which has successfully created our drill down one on the lead object, which we can quickly check. If we search for drill down, you can see here, original source drill down one. So last but not least, we need to actually go and create this on the contact object. So we're going to go find the contact, apologies. So we're going to go and find the contact, not the contract. And head to fields and relationships and press new. Scroll down, select text, press next. The field value is the same. So if we go back over here and find our same name there and press save. The length is 255. We do not need a description or a help text at this point. We can press next, press next once more and add it to the contact layout here. It's crucial that the field labels match so that when the sync happens, it can map it to both objects. So just make sure that both the field, field label is exactly the same as the one on the actual lead object or vice versa. Press save. And if we quickly search this, here you will now find that we have got our original source drilled on one as well. What that then means is the last step in this process is we need to head back over to our actual HubSpot environment on the contacts object once more. Add a new field mapping. We're going to search for original source drilled on one. We're going to search once more for the original source drill down. And if that's not showing, just remember to give your integration a refresh, add the field value here. So remember it's the original source drill down one. Let's select the drill down one object field that we just created, press next. It's going to be a two way sync. We're then going to press save. And now if we quickly search for our new fields, you'll see that we have successfully mapped the original source between both Salesforce and HubSpot as well. What this will allow you to do is have effective attribution reporting and source reporting, despite whichever system that you mainly operate in, allowing to make full flexibility of the overall direct and native integration between the two CRMs, whilst not um, hampering or restricting the effects and impact that attribution reporting can have on your portal. Hopefully this video all made sense and I look forward to speaking with you guys next time. Take care.